Hi everyone. Today I wanted to talk about something that, um, about what is it that's happening in our body when we fall in love and um, why is that mis misconception that when we fall in love it's this particular person that gives us love, um, the one with whom we're now relating. In fact, what's happening is that when we are born, we are born where we have the whole potential. It's like an acorn um, theory, where an acorn already has the potential of the big oak tree within it. Um, and so as we, all of us as well, when we are born, uh, we have this potential to be everything that we want to be, anything that we can be. Um, and where we live, our life force is coursing through us without restriction. Uh, as children, we're spontaneous, we're curious, we, we're not really um, limited by fear until we start absorbing fear and scarcity and limitation from our environment, from the fear of our parents, from the society that teaches us what is good, what is bad, and what is right and what is wrong, and starts shaming us for our natural tendency to explore and um, to follow our curiosity. Uh, so what happens is when trauma happens right during our development, that trauma shuts our bodies off. Um, the, the, as I've said so many times before, our body is flooded with the emotions that are too powerful for us to process in the moment and our intelligent system shuts down. Um, so what happens is as we, uh, as we become adults and we start forming relationships with other people, other adults, what's happening when we connect with someone and it fills us with joy and we feel like we're falling in love, what's actually happening is that we are again connecting, those of us that can, right? Some of us are shut down so completely that we, we have trouble opening our hearts up at all. But, um, those of us that are able to open our hearts in those moments actually are flooded once again by that beautiful life force, by that incredible uh, energy. It's also called Eros. It's also called creativity. Um, so this life force animates us again. Um, but what happens is that our mind then tries to create a story to explain to us why we're feeling the way we're feeling. And we attach that feeling to the person with whom we are. Then when this person leaves or, or we break up, you know, if, or they die, you know, when life continues and life happens, and if we're not with this person uh, anymore, we start, um, the, the inner unconscious process is that we're shutting down our heart again, because then we create the story that we were rejected or that we're not worthy or that we're nothing to them. And we attach so much of the feeling that was animating our system and that was ours, we now have it mean something about the person. So we shut down when this person who we assumed was the deliverer of this incredible feeling, when this person is no longer in our lives, we then shut that life force down again. Um, and so that is actually what's happening is that the process of the, you know, when we feel euphoria and when we feel the opposite of euphoria, so when we feel rejected and when we feel undernourished by that incredible life force, the process is internal. Um, what hurts us so much is the power we give to our mind and the, our attachment to particular stories of how life is supposed to be. That is actually what I find at this, as the source of so much of our suffering is that, you know, life brings us to where we need to go for our highest potential. And yet we resist. We resist because we're following a man-made, um, you know, sense of reality. We, we are attached to the images that were cultured into us when we were growing up. So if you're a woman, that means, you know, you're only valuable until a certain age. After a certain age, if you're not attached, damaged goods. And if you don't have children under, after a certain age or by a certain age, then, you know, once again, you're damaged goods, etc., etc. We are full of these stories and men have their own stories. So all these, uh, also we were told, for example, that 
sexuality is bad and that it's uh, you know it's uh, it's it's shameful and we were also told all kinds of things about money uh, that money is bad and it's the root of all, of, of all evil etc etc and there's just so much to say about all that but basically what I want to um, make clear today is that our biggest enemy if there is even such a thing because all of all of us is part of this journey but what really makes us suffer is our attachment to what we were told reality is. And the way to break out of it is understand that reality is much more complex than what, you know, the capitalist patriarchal society that told us what is right and what is wrong. Um, or religious, you know, beliefs or whatever it is that was specific to our family. Life is much more complicated than that. We're living in a um, multidimensional reality. Uh, and also, you know, today in the quantum um, understanding of the way the universe is operating, we are the source of our reality. So it's not as much Newtonian physics where cause and effect um, but more of you are the source of your own reality. So the more we break away from the images that were uh, conditioned into us and the more we understand, first of all, reconnect mind, body and spirit, which is the, the, the metho method that I employ in my work with other people and what saved me. Um, when we understand that our body has enormous amount of information for us and come back to its wisdom, allocate time and cultivate relationship with that inner knowing, that inner wisdom, our life will change completely because you'll realize that that, that life force, the errors, the, the curiosity, the creativity, all of this is in our power. That sense of freedom, that sense of power, that sense of you know, when we think that we could do anything and we're limitless, that is completely in our, in our hands and in, available to us. When we connect to, to understanding of where our power comes from and where our love comes from. So it doesn't get delivered by anyone on the outside. All of it is an internal process. And what we need to do, what we need to learn is how to understand how we can reconnect to that source of our power, our freedom, our safety, our love, um, how to gain that power back and how to, to be the self-sourcing. Then we enter into our relationships from curiosity, from desire to grow together or to build something together, but no longer as beggars needing to be filled by these other people who we have no control over. So. Just wanted to share with you today and uh, let me know how this lands for you and um, please reach out if you need help uh, connecting to your own wisdom in your own life because we are so much more powerful than most of us um, realize and our life can be much more of a freeing and beautiful flow than uh, what we allow it to be right now before we reconnect to our uh, love, our supply of love and life force. All right, everyone, have a beautiful week. Bye-bye.